that was me testing the microphone. <laughs> so a test that now. Da -da -da -da. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to have our last Q&A of the day. Uh, so yeah, if you are making your way in, do have an instant, have a, a seat on the floor, get on the cable thing there, that's good use of the cable thing. I don't know the technical term. Uh, as I say, yeah, come on down, get close. All you have to do, you've got one job if you're in this area, and that's to make it feel welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Edmonds here! Yeah. Come on up, Josh. Have a bet. Crunch yourself on the sofa. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Oh. How are you doing? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's on. I didn't think it was on. Oh, yeah, that's why I did my, my now famous mic test of da 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 Never, never works. Uh, how are you doing? How's that work treating you? Yeah, well, it's, it's good so far. I haven't, I haven't seen much of it, but um, yeah. as you know, we only arrived last night. Yeah, uh, me and Josh got the same train here, and I instantly fell asleep in front of him with, I believe, a bag of crystals in my hands. So, yeah. great first impressions. Uh, cool jumper, though. Good jumper, that's it. If I'm going to sleep, it's a good jumper. Um, yeah, I'm not going out. Are you going to try and see the city? I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go for a walk tonight and uh, try and see some stuff. Take in the locale. I always ask, anyone got any uh, restaurant recommendations? That's a good question. Nope. Uh, okay. What do you like to eat? Where? What does he like to eat? Anything. Anything. What, well, yeah, uh, anything. What's, what's, what? Do you like what? Ribs. Ribs. Yeah. I'm a dance ribs. Do they constantly play Falco in the background? That is a reference that I didn't think was going to fly, and it didn't. Um, there you go, if you like ribs, get to Amadeus. Amadeus. Um, I'm going to make a note of this. Yeah, this, this, is, this is half my time on stage these days. Is, well, it's good to eat. Um, they will kill me if I don't start talking to you about your career in a minute. But uh, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. Anyone got any better recommendations than ribs? Well, who was that? I can't hear you, but shout louder! Something about Daniel Radcliffe. Something that you, apparently you can eat Daniel Radcliffe here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, we'll get to the question soon. But yeah, do you still bully Daniel Radcliffe? I like how she's turned into a real life bully. Uh, we, we're going to do questions at the end, but that will be our first question. See, so this is what happens. They, they're going to want me to talk to you about Harry Potter sooner or later. I'm trying to keep it away, really build the tension. Yeah. Uh, nice, uh, nice tactic. Yeah, I like it. And actually, before we're going to talk about that, uh, just when I was doing my research on you, I've watched you fight a lot the last few days. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was something you did. Yeah, yeah, I do a bit of it, yeah. How long have you been doing that? How long have you been, been fighting? Um, I, should, I should point out that he does it in a, a, a controlled professional capacity. It's not just, I'm not watching videos of him fighting on the street. <laughs> uh, I've been doing MMA since 2016. Two, uh, yeah, two years now. Two years. How long have you been training? You can't just wake up one morning and go, you know what, I'm going to try it. No, I, uh, I've been doing traditional Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Maybe six, six years now? Six or six years. Six years? I think. Um, and when I started doing uh, martial arts, I always... Well, my dad was a boxer. So, as a, as a kid, I, I, I always watched my dad's uh, pictures of my dad fighting. And two of my older brothers have both boxed as well. And I, even as a kid, it, like, it was a goal of mine to want to have a fight, basically. Like a proper fight. Um, and then I started doing martial arts and what I told myself, I said, well, when I get my black belt in jiu-jitsu, then I'll have a, have a, have a fight, have a cage fight. Wow. So I was really into like UFC at the time, and, well, I still am, and I was watching a lot of it. And I thought, yeah, my dad was a boxer, I think I want to step further, I want to cage fight. You get it? I'll bring in the rest of the body. It's yeah. really big. Um, what was that like going into your first fight? That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Minimum requirement to go to a fight. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary. But I was quietly confident. Um, 
but you know, if you want, the, the first one's very scrappy, but it's, it's going to be for your first, your first fight. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I, I did them, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to have another fight next year. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you, do you properly prepare them to just train and train and train? Yeah, I mean, for my last one, um, it was just three months, just three months solid, like training every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, just a mega, mega strict diet. Yeah. It's just the worst bit about the, the diet. As you know from seeing obviously on the train, I'm also very strict with my diet. Yeah. I, I get about 10 heads of crisps on the way there. It's ridiculous. Um, is that something you always wanted to do then? Like, you said your dad's a boxer. So, was that something you were doing as a kid as well? Oh, uh, yeah, I used to go down the boxing gym as a kid. And my, my, my dad made sure uh, I'm the youngest of four. Like from a very young age, he made Oh, so you had to fight straight away? Well, no, he just wanted us to be able to defend ourselves. So, like, from a very young age, he, he, he showed us how to punch and punch properly and stuff like that. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did that, um, do you think, obviously, because you started acting very young as well, didn't you? you were acting before Harry Potter, weren't you? Yeah, I started at seven. Yeah, wow. Was that something you think just a bonus for them? Like, because you must have been. You're still in a box, I imagine, for your age, you're a boy big anyway. Oh, I was, I was being big for my age at one point. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, stacked. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I was. What do you mean? Like when I was younger? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, I was actually actually quite big when I was younger. And, um, but I actually, I actually drew the short straw because I've got three older brothers and they're all six foot plus. And I'm the only one who's just under six foot. So I kind of drew the short straw there. Do you think you in terms of height? Do you think you could take them? My brothers? Uh, I wouldn't, I'd probably not. <laughs> you say they're all boxers as well? Yeah, well, two of them, two of them were. Um, I don't know how much of them were, but my, one of my brothers was a Royal Marine. Um, he was, a, he was a Royal Marine, but he did the boxing, he was a Royal Marine champion. Oh, wow. Um, and my brother above him, Luke, he was just, he was just a savage. So I don't, <laughs> don't mess with your family, is yeah. the, the thing there. So uh, in terms of like your family, so you come from a fairly big family then. Um, any other actors in the family, or is it just you? Yeah, my dad, my dad acts. Dad, well, he, he got me into it, because he was, he was late, late to it. Um, to my mid thirties, I think, uh, and then it was a good idea to get me and my other brother in, involved. My other brother, he didn't like it at all. He just he did like one job, and was like, this is not for me. Uh, but I really liked it, so I, I stuck at it. So, what sort of acting were you doing before you got the Harry Potter? Uh, mainly like TV commercials. I did uh, TV like uh, McDonald's commercial or Wal Woolworths. TV ever acting is one of the weirdest industries in the world. You'll never get any other brief because you're a happy, sad person. And you need to, yeah, uh, they're absolutely nice. It's good money though for TV commercials. So is that, but was that the route to, yeah, it is a good route. No, it's because it used to be then, I'm told, I'm told. Um, was that the route to Harry Potter or was, was it something else? Because quite often a lot of you guys who are in the films, you'd just be at school or somewhere to discover it. Yeah, no, I, I had auditions, yeah, yeah. I had an agent uh, from about eight. And uh, yeah, I got the audition for Dudley first of all. When, oh, when, wow. when I went for Dudley. I had maybe like four or five auditions for Dudley. And um, I got down to two last two kids for Dudley. That wasn't Harry Mellick, that was another kid. Then the producers decided again it's both of us and then recast. And then they found Harry Mellick. Uh, so then I, I, they, they said I didn't have the part. I didn't hear from them for like three weeks. And then they said come back and try for Boyle. Then yeah, it turns your life. How, how old were you when you got that role? Uh, when, when I got the part? Yeah, 13. I was 13 and then we filmed for 10 years, finished when I was 23, now I'm 31. Hey, it happens, doesn't it? Ah, it happens. Luckily, I've been over 20. <laughs> 35. Yeah, just catch it up, doesn't it? Catch it up. But I think 
it with the Harry Potter, like, you're one of the, the cast who's been through all of them, like, from start to finish. Yeah. Like, it, I don't think there's any other franchise ever that has that, where there's such a tight group of people who grew up on the screen. Like, you obviously have people who grew up on the screen, but like, you guys were, yeah, ten years together. Yeah. And, and, uh, obviously that's going to change your life, but is that a... That, did you still get to the school and stuff like that? Everyone's oh, yeah. 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 yeah, they were, they were really, really straight to the school. Did they, they school you on set? And then, yeah. And then you go back to your normal school? Or? I, basically, I basically just saw it as like a homework club. Because they would, they would tell you to go to your school, go and get a bunch of work from your teacher on the subjects that you were doing from different, from different classes. Um, and then you take it to a studio and do the work. So it's basically just like homework. There wasn't really much tutoring involved. Uh, and I hated it. Yeah. I really didn't like it. But that's, that's probably the worst thing about it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the, the, the side of that you're you working during the day and then working during the night. Can't yeah. Exactly the way, so. were, were they long shoots as well? They're long. Six, six months? So, yeah. I saw this up last week. It's been a while. It's been a while, it's been a while. yeah. yeah. Even, I, I think like Deathly Hallows Part 2 still a few years ago. It's pretty in a way, isn't it? It's in a way. Um, when you. So, you would have graduated school during midway through the series. And then was yes. it a case of then once you finished education, you're like, I'm an actor now, and that's what I do? Well, yeah, pretty much. I remember finishing school and then not, not having to do tutoring anymore. It was, just, it was amazing. I loved it. But, uh, boring. Filmmaking is really boring. So it can be, oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, I think it, more so if you're acting because you've got so much time. Yeah. 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 Especially if you've got a smaller part like I had. And a lot of waiting around. Yeah. It's half, half of the job, isn't it? Yeah. Um, are you, but did you, when you finished, what was your sort of joy? Was it focus was mainly acting, or did you ever draw towards fighting then? No, I no, 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 I wasn't really into martial arts when we were finished filming. Um, I didn't really have any plan. I never thought I'd have a fight, but. Um, yeah, no, I just really focused on acting. To be honest, at that sort of time, I was just I was partying a lot. <laughs> I was mainly just interested in that. <laughs> um, I wasn't really taking the acting seriously, and I wasn't really taking anything seriously. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's the joys of being in your twenties. Young, and, yeah, young with money. <laughs> Immediately filters uh, all his thoughts. <laughs> um, but am I right in thinking you've got kids now? So? Yeah, I've got two kids. Yeah. How old are they? I've got an eight year old and a three year old. Wow. Yeah. Eight? Yeah. So you pretty much I'm driving the man. You finished and then. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he, yeah, he came just after we finished. Oh, wow. How long have you been with your, your wife, girlfriend, uh, partner? I don't know. Fiance, nearly. Um, up for nine years. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh wow. It happened all very quickly. When did you get engaged? A year ago? Did you propose? Yeah. Is it in the most stressful thing that I've ever done? It is it is quite stressful actually. Very stressful. I did last year. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've, I've figured out how I was gonna do it pretty I figured out how I was gonna do it pretty came to that the light bulb moment and it was quite good for moment. So are you gonna share or is that a private moment? Yeah, I I saw you know, uh, I saw I saw a print. I don't know where I saw this print. It's like a it was a print where you can customise the print with like certain like, memories. It's like it's like a cool design, a red and green design. And you can like different memories, holidays, various other things. But like hidden in within it was what you made. Framed it and then gave her as a present. Just didn't, she couldn't see it. <laughs> was, we just sat there going, She was like, oh, the old She was like, Oh, it's really nice. It's like, Oh, man. Uh, I won't do the wedding chat on stage, but we're planning a wedding at the moment and it's, it's absolutely crap. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. It's just like, every, every decision is like, uh, do, do you want that? 
Yes, then I want that as well. <laughs> That's pretty much our whole, whole ethos. Um, so you got kids together, one of them's eight. Does that mean you've done, they've watched you in the films then? Uh, yeah, yeah. Was, it's still huge with kids, like, it's still huge. Yeah, but well, to be honest, my eight year old, he's not seen, yeah, I don't think he's seen one film the whole way through yet. Oh, um, really? But he's, he's totally aware of how big it is. You know, so, like, it's like the first thing he says to strangers oh, on really? holiday or goes to the playground and bumps into some kids. He's like, oh yeah, hi, can I play? My dad was going in Harry Potter. It's like, it's like the first thing he said. Kind of like a, a credit and also to kids a bit of a threat. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it was a bully. Yeah. I, I try to... You know, it's not the first thing that you should say, you know. Oh, it's so... He's cute, it's funny. And my three-year-old, three obviously, he doesn't understand about Harry Potter, but I, I did a short film this year um, where I played the lead, and the director, she sent me the link to it, and I, I put it on the big TV, and we, I didn't say anything to my, my three-year-old. He was just sitting there, and he looked at the TV, and then I was on it, and then he went, we just... <laughs> looked at the TV, and he looked at me, and was like...
the sets for TV series and stuff. Uh, and then I made, then me and my friend, we actually made one of the short films that we had written. And it put me off. Really? <laughs> yeah, really, really put me off. But I was stupid, we were both stupid, because we went in there and we just did all sort of um, very guerrilla filmmaking. Uh, we didn't have any money, I like, put my own money into it. We didn't have a, we didn't have a crew. I was like, so there was no, there was no um, director of photography. There was, no, there, was, there was no personal assistant, there, there was no uh, assistant director, nothing. It was just stupid. And it's so stressful. And the, we, we really liked the script, and it came out rubbish. It really put, it put me off. I mean, you, you never know, so I've, I direct Spielberg, and I've just done exactly the same way as a shoot where there was basically video on cameras and it's all on sound. And yeah. It's just the fucked up. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it's the same thing we said on sound, man, is it? Yeah, yeah. But so, that's the thing, isn't it? That's why you get massive crews. I mean, you, and you've come from some of the biggest crews you'll ever work. Like, it's, it does sort of the riches are important. It's huge. It's weird, isn't it, when suddenly you realise why. Yeah, and I, after the, that short film experience, I said to myself, I'd never, I'd A, never put my own money into it, I'd B, not do it without DOP or, you know, like assistant directors. Yeah. You, need, you need that around you. Um, you, you need a million person eyes just to do one job. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel your pain. <laughs> my, my writing, uh, I'm still really interested in writing because there's so much that I wanted to write now. Quite a lot of ideas. Do you find it harder now you're a parent to find time to do stuff like that? Or is it to do for yourself? Yeah, I, do, I, find, I, find, I find it hard to find time to do anything. Um, so I do, I do a lot of these events and auditions. And any, any free time I get, I, I, I take my boys out. It's what yeah. makes me happy, happiest with this. Uh, do, you, do you spend a lot of time on the road? Then? Recently, um, which I like, I love traveling. That's part, that's part of cool things about doing the flying clubs. Yeah, is that you get to travel. Um, but yeah, I would, um, I'd like some, uh, yeah, some, some quiet time. I, uh, I once read, uh, I think it's Michael Palin said, I think, is when you do anything like this, because it's essentially freelance work, you don't have that switch to just turn off and constantly feel like you should be trying to find work and do, or doing something. And yeah, it's, 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 it's a really weird thing like, where it's the amount of work you have that permission to switch off. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's that weird sort of balance, which is, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. Good old pain, eh? Um, I am going to open the floor to you, so if you have questions, please raise your hand and we will get a microphone to you. Um, do we have it's going to be me, I'll come straight to you. I'll be careful of the feedback. Hey, um, I was wondering if you look back on um, the old Harry Potter experience, what have been some of your favorite scenes to shoot? And um, what is your personal out of all the films, your own personal favorite film? So, in the Harry Potter whole thing, uh, what favorite scenes to shoot? And what is your personal favorite film out of the series? Um, my favourite film, uh, my favourite scene was the Polyjuice motion scene because, you know, that's where Goyle is featured mostly, really. Um, any scene that where I was more featured, I enjoyed because the attention was on me, that, that, that felt nice. Um, and I'd say my, my, my favourite film was the third one, the Prisoner, the Prisoner of Azkaban. It's all changed uh, at that point. Uh, Alfonso Cuaron came on board. Personally, the best. He's directing. Yeah. yeah, it really was. It's just little things like you know, Chris Columbus is amazing, but like the, in terms of the way everything was seemed like perfect and like glossy, yeah. there would be like a hair out of place, the top button always had to be done up. Whereas when Alfonso Cuarón, he wanted to make it more real, so he like you know, have, have a monkey tie, have that top button undone, have your hair a bit messy. Which I like, I like really yeah, seeing yeah. films. So. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, just because you, you talk about um, scenes for you, the Harry Potter, we have talked to a few people, and quite often they have the scenes that most people have cut, or bits that they have cut. Were there any for you that you. Um, not like I remember, the Polyjuice Potion scene, they cut a, bit, a few bits off of that. So 
there's a scene where when Harry and Ron, as Crab and Boyle, they're changing back and then and, and they bump into the real Crab and Boyle who they stuffed in the broom cupboard. Um, we filmed that, they didn't put that in. I'm sure there was some other bits, I can't even remember now. Don't worry, mate, don't worry. Um, any other questions? And, yeah. So we've got here and then we'll, we'll get through as many as we can. I will try again to carefully. During your MMA career, was there ever more people down with you because you were you had to be persistent in movies? So during your MMA career, did you ever come across people who doubted you because you have come from acting and they're sort of like, oh, an actor's fine? Well, yeah, I mean, my, my first fight, I, I didn't want anyone to know, like, because I thought, I don't know, for that reason, really, I thought, like, oh, I'm just an actor and this, this. Um, so I tried holding it down, but then I was approached by um, an MMA magazine and they said, oh, I want to do a lot of articles like that. They, they were new. Um, but yeah, I just didn't want to be, I didn't, didn't want to feel like I was at any disadvantage whatsoever. So even mentally, if he goes into a fight thinking oh, he's just an actor, I don't know. Just, yeah, well, I wanted it to be like I was just a, an amateur fighter, not, not an actor. Yeah, makes, makes, exactly, exactly. When, when you go into a fight, do you have the same sort of feelings you do if you're going into do a scene? Must be still adrenaline floats and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's similar, but it's a similar, it's a similar feeling. I mean, this short film which I did, um, which I was telling you about, there's a big scene at the end where there's a lot of lines and I don't know, I was, I was a bit scared about, not that scared, I was a bit anxious about, about doing it. And the, the feeling is similar, but before fights, I can't really explain it, it's like that, that multiplied, you know, tenfold. It's, it's, a, real, it's a real crazy feeling. Um, and you know, I, I, would re I would weirdly recommend it to anyone. Um, you, you, learn, you learn a lot about yourself, uh, physically, preparing physically and mentally for, for a fight. Um, you really learn, yeah. yeah.
fantastic piece of obsidian. I, I really want to see it. It's, been, it's like one of the top, top of my list of films that I need to sit down and watch. Uh, um, yeah. It's a real expectation, isn't it, that when you name the franchise that you then feel connected to the Warrior franchise. Like, it's a yeah. strange thing, yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm interested to, to see what yeah. I'm doing. It's a mixed, mixed thing. Some people say it's been like, a bit Americanized, some people say it's, it's amazing. I really liked it. I, I'm really excited to see what they do when it sort of can spread away to be for this other thing. It's quite interesting. Yeah, it's just delving deeper into that world, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. They're going to get far now, it's good. Now, the second question, uh, and this is a big internet thing, isn't it, at the moment? So, there's this big internet thing about how. Uh, uh, have you seen the thing about how Harry's the boy and Draco's not? So, there's this big thing. Yeah, yeah, so there's this big thing about. Um, how Draco comes from this broken home where his dad is evil and manipulative and so he so essentially is a victim of her and a product of his circumstance. Yeah, he's a product of his and environment. And it all stems from that moment where Harry he goes to shake Harry's hand and he doesn't. And he said essentially yeah, Harry turns her into the villain. Do you have, do you have a spin on that? That's an interesting angle, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean I think yeah, I think Obviously, is a product, you know, of, of his environment and his, and his dad. His dad's a nasty, nasty guy. That kind of makes sense. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a bully, you know, the, uh, Harry, but no. Um, well, you get deep in the internet. You can find anything. I mean, I, I, I'm sure there's some things you don't want to see on the internet. Do you? Doesn't he? Doesn't he refuse to shake his hand? Had Draco already insulted Bond prior to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to the experts, so they're all, yes, that's yeah. exactly it. Exactly. Yeah, Draco already, like, insulted his friend, yeah. so you're going to go, I think. Is that right? Yeah. You, have any of you guys seen the play? They come in and touch on it years later. I'm not going to spoil anything, but they kind of go down that road, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's not do spoilers, because um, this is definitely not the environment. <laughs> right, anyone else with questions? Hands up. Oh, come on, don't be shy. Anyone? I, uh, yeah, we got one there and one there. We'll come here and then we'll go there, okay? No, actually, there was this other girl, but I don't know if she's here. But her question was, do you still bully Daniel Radcliffe? And I actually want to know the answer to that. <laughs> Still bullied Daniel Radcliffe. I haven't seen, seen or spoken to him in years, so no, the answer to that. I mean, the worst answer you can get from that is if you said, yeah, actually, I did write that and bullied Daniel Radcliffe. Did you imagine? <laughs> no, it never happened. He used to bully me, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not bully me, but he, when I was younger, I used to um, uh, quite a high pitched laugh. He always used to take Mickey out of the for <laughs> No, no, it's really, it's really wind me up. Is it, is that, is that weird? I mean, that's the other side of it, isn't it? Because he's acting in general, but when you're, you're kids as well, like, you have that sort of play, extra playfulness, so when the cameras switch off, I imagine, yeah. And it was a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of jokes, a lot of fun. That's, we always get that question like, uh, about pranks and stuff on set. The other one that everyone always wants to know is, did you get everything, anything off the set? Did you most of the key game? Yeah. Yeah, I've got, yeah, got a few things. I've fallen into my pocket. Nice. <laughs> Were you one of the people who managed to get a wand off set? No one did that. No, I don't think anyone did. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, you know, the main thing they might have. Yeah. You've got to keep their wands off. Nah, they didn't. They were really on the wall with wands. Yeah. They would give them to you just, just as you go on set. As soon as you step foot off set, they'll be taking the wand back off. Everyone says the same, like there's someone who's a whole job was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Anyway, your question? Oh, oh Slytherin as well. the food? Yeah. What, like in the canteen? It was really good. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Some people didn't like it, but I thought it was really good. There you go. Is that come from a, a, anywhere in particular? Have you heard any horror stories around the food? Not really. I mean, the, 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 the food 
food which we had to eat in the scenes. That wasn't nice. Uh, so it often be cold and uh, it's, yeah, not, not, not that nice. What's the uh, thing you've heard about the food that they do next then? Oh, you just throw out food. <laughs> I think what's happened here is you've been really polite and it turns out you're, you're actually quite hungry. So what's, what's the food? You should get to Amadeus, they do good ribs, I've heard. Um, any more questions? Yes and yes, we'll take a couple more and then we'll stop. If you could come to me, that would help. We'll go one, two, and then we'll probably wrap it up, so. Uh, have you done the list on uh, Pottermore to see what happens? Oh, have you done the, yeah, have you been housed? I'm a Griffin. on the What? I'm Slytherin, mate. Oh, yeah. Of course I am. <laughs> yes. Um, are you really Gryffindor? Yeah. Did you, do, did you do the Patronus quiz as well? I haven't done that, mate. Oh, well, that's uh, something we should do in the hotel later. <laughs> What's the Patronus the <laughs> Um There we go. Yes, yes, sir. Good costume. Is it hard to play a body when you have a yarn nice guy? Is it hard to play a body when you're a nice guy? Ah, no, that's quite that's why you was an actor, you know. But there's that notorious thing, isn't there, with a lot of actors where being bad or being like a like a thuggish character is more fun than being a nice guy. It is more fun and it's actually easier. It's when you have to play someone likable, sort of like sort of straight. Straight section, you know, so, uh, it's actually a bit tricky because yeah. you can't be. You feel like there's limits, and you can't really do much. Whereas with the, the baddie, you can, um, I don't know, there's lots of quirks you can add to them and stuff. There's something, there's something in that uh, thing about giving yourself an excuse to be something you're not, then you go for it more because you're like, this is so against freedom and when someone goes right. Yeah. I mean, I just, well, I just try to be as real as possible. You know, if if, if, if you're nasty, then you just have to like kind of to tap into most other emotions like, that I've experienced in the past and stuff. It's like uh, some people find it really hard to cry. I find it's quite easy for me to cry. Like um, if they need, if they need me to. Uh, yeah, but it's different as well. Yeah. Oh, it's a discipline, isn't it? I, I was never trained, so I just, I just, I just try and be as real as possible. You know, just try not to look like I'm acting. As you can see, when people are trying to act, and people are just being real. Yeah, 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 it, it completely. Is that, is that? Um, sometimes you can just see people trying to get from A to B in the scene. Yeah, and there's that, that thing where you can just see people just trying to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, I think we can probably take one more question if anyone wants to get. Yeah, we'll do this question and then we'll, we'll let you get back to the phone. This is a bit more of a serious question, but since you started acting so young, do you feel like it impacted your life? And if so, how? I mean, in growing up, was it very different than your friends, for example? Um, it wasn't. It wasn't because Coyle was a smaller part, I got, I got the best of both worlds. I could have my personal life, I could go out with my friends and stuff and get into trouble. And, uh, and then I would go, go, to, go to set and, and do the filming. But I think it does impact you. I, mean, I think financially as well, quite a lot. Depends, because my parents were quite relaxed with my money. They kind of let me kind of... Yeah, I kind of do what I wanted with it, you know, just, just take some work his money. Um, so yeah, it definitely impacted my life. And everyone's always positive, positive and negative. Positively and negative. Everyone's always goes to the mind of like when you're a kid in the units or so. What's it like when you're like 17, 18 or so? Going out and stuff like that. Is that cause to, you would have still been in, like in, in the film, so you must have recognised and stuff like that. Yeah. Also, when I was younger, but um, um, yeah, I was still recognised. You enjoyed, enjoyed those bits. We, we will do that, bro. Um, I am going to let you go um, because you've been lovely, and 
there's a whole, whole, whole hour and a half to go yet. But Josh, thank you for joining us thank on the sofa. You. Uh, you guys know what to do. A big, big round of applause. <laughs> good everyone. He's here all weekend as well. Please go to see him at his table, go talk to him. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. We'll be back at, uh, on the hour. We've got